folks, it's Jared Mananen from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about getting up after you've fallen down while you're cross-country skiing. That seems to be a pretty common theme for beginners. The cross-country ski area that I work at, I see a lot of people, first-timers, even intermediate skiers fall down and really struggle to get up. There's a couple of good techniques or tricks that you can use that just make it a little bit easier. It's never going to be totally easy, especially if you're in a backcountry environment where the snow is very deep, but I'll provide a couple of ideas for you to work toward as far as getting up more efficiently. Here I am skiing along, and for whatever reason I pitch head first into the snow. Maybe my ski tip got buried under snow or got trapped underneath a branch that I was skiing on top of. Either way, the first thing I want to do is relax. The second thing I like to do then is to remove my hands from my ski pole grips and I bring those ski poles together in a parallel fashion. And you can either push yourself back up to your skis or if your skis are already parallel you can bring them uh, underneath you. And from here I just kind of slowly work my way back so I'm stacking myself under my, my skis so my weight is directly beneath my center and then I'm working to get straight up. I actually see people fall from a complete standstill often and it looks just as ridiculous. Again, whenever you fall down, just take a second to compose yourself, try not to stress out. In this case, my skis are actually parallel already, but if they weren't and they happen to be in opposite directions or pinned under the other ski, you would want to align them so they weren't like parallel. Get up so that your skis are up. Grab your ski tips, kind of bring them down, your knees to your chest, and just fall over. And again, if I had to, I could use it as a snow anchor. But again, trying to keep your, your weight centered over your feet. So working back and then just standing up. A lot of people will tend to want to use their poles and try to push themselves up, but that's just a bad policy because more often than not, you're going to bend that pole and break it or make it unusable. And if you are in a backcountry environment, it's not a good tool to lose or to have broken as your ski pole. So if you can avoid using these as some sort of a lever to prop yourself up, do. Um, so again, you know, we're on our back. Ah. Bring those skis, you can even sit up if you have to. Grab the tips. And I had my knees to my chest. You can also just keep your legs straight and just roll over under your skis. And then work your way into, uh, you know, in this case, I'm gonna do kind of like a one, one legged lunge here. I, mean, I just brought one ski directly under. Stand up for your skis and you're good to go. Now this is on a relatively firm surface that I'm on, so I'll show a couple of instances where it's pretty deep snow and it can create a little bit of a panic because there is so much snow. At this point, I don't know if I'd even consider this skiing. It's more like snowshoeing with cross-country skis on, but it's beautiful, so I go outside just the same. In this deep stuff, it can be a little bit scary you can really go into a panic because there's nowhere to really push off from. So the first thing I like to do is get those ski poles away from my hands, put them either parallel or form a cross with them, and then start to compress the snow down around me so that I have some type of a platform on which to stand up and launch some sort of initiative to get up. Free those skis so that you can carry on and then pretty much go about your business as if nothing ever happened. Another pratfall by me, but another illustration of how you can get up in deep snow without any fear. Again, free your hands, compress the snow around you. Making incremental movements is fine. You don't have to be up immediately. Just take your time, build your position as you go so that when you're ready to stand up, you do and it's not a big deal. 
it is nice too at the end to really clear your skis. Here I am falling down after going down a hill. It's obviously not a very steep hill, but it is what it is. And I just wanted to show that the way I fell, I'm actually upside down and downhill. My skis are all askew, so the first thing I do, outside of clearing my airway, that's the most important thing. That'll send you into panic more than anything, as if you got snow trapped all over your face. But I wanna get those skis in a parallel position I work my way so I'm oriented downhill and that my skis are perpendicular to the fall line so that when I do stand up, I'm not gonna go sailing downhill or falling backwards again. I should be able to stand up with some relative ease and then maintain my direction perpendicular to the hill. Again, clearing those skis to make sure when I do decide to start skiing again, I'm not going to get buried immediately. One last look here at falling downhill and landing on your back with your head pointed downhill. Clear the airway, start compressing the snow around you, and get those skis parallel. In this case, what I found helpful was simply using my back because of the surface area of my body as a means of compressing the snow with the back instead of my hands. Turning around so I orient myself downhill but with skis perpendicular to the hill. I actually use my ski to pull myself up, get my other ski underneath my center, post hole my shoulder because it's soft snow, and then stand up and grab my ski poles. In this instant, I didn't use the ski poles because I wanted to simulate as if I had lost them while falling down the hill. Okay, folks, that's it. Sorry about all that wind early on, but I hope this helped. Be safe out there. I'm gonna reach out if you have any questions. This is Jared Manninen at TahoeTrailGuide.com.